First, introduce myself. I'm, I'm Alejandro. I I'm, uh, work as a graduate assistant at the, grad, the Undergraduate Career Advancement Center. And uh, today I'll be hosting this, this meeting and our panelists, as I already said, will be Nicole Bonilla. She's working at Accenture and Bina Abdul, she's working at Pfizer. So um, I would appreciate it if you you two just let us know a little bit about what you're doing and and, and we'll get started. Nicole? I can go first. Hey guys, um, my name is Nicole. I'm very happy to be here with you guys. Um, Alejandro, I was also, uh, I also worked at the CAC when I was an undergrad. So really cool um, to, to see it keep going, right? Um, but my name is uh, Nicole. I'm out of, uh, at Accenture. I'm out of the R Atlanta office. So still here locally. Um, I joined Accenture about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, and I've been with the campus recruiting team since I joined. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bina and um, I've been with Pfizer for a year and two months now. And I'm a systems engineer. Um, basically, a lot of people don't know what systems engineer do. So we are um, the back end of the technical part of the computers. And um, yeah, I, w I also went to Georgia State as well. Um, and really, I, I do a lot of technical work, a lot of troubleshooting. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, and so, yeah, so basically, Ed, these are unprecedented times as uh, many of you have already heard and um, or lived and lived because uh, we're all living this uh, pandemic right now. And this has challenges, <clears throat> has uh, made us a, or, or posed a challenge for all of us, which is working from home and taking virtual classes and uh, just a lot of virtual meetings and less and less person in-person contact. So I would like to ask you, you two first, um, well, first, I want to, to let everybody know that if they have any questions, you can um, you can either use the chat to to state your questions and uh, for the panelists and and we can we can just uh, jump in and I'll, I'll let I'll let you know if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, but I, I would like uh, if uh, to ask you guys with uh, working from home. Uh, I know that it can be hard to prioritize what needs your attention. Um, so how have you been able to adjust to this new normal and prioritizing projects and your personal life? And how do you guys deal with it? Um, personally, since working at Pfizer, I am, we already do virtual meetings and virtual calendars and virtual projects, you know, collaboration. For me, it wasn't that hard. I was used to it. Um, however, just not interacting with my teammates were was the hardest part for me. Um, I got used to it because I would set up some time um, and try to reconnect virtually with them. And that kind of helps, but overall, you just have to know what your weaknesses and um, strong point is when it comes to virtual. Uh, meetings or even setting up schedule and understanding that you need to be flexible um, because t times are different. We all have different things to do at different times. And for for me, each week is different, especially when it comes with troubleshooting. I can't just put stuff on my calendar and say, OK, I got you know, I, I'm going to do all this and I'm going to get it done. Um, I have to be flexible and put one or two things on my calendar uh, on a weekly basis and then let the week decide for me what to do later on. Okay. Um, similar to Bina, I we also 
already work from home from a large part. In fact, uh, my team and I, um, as well as the teams across the country, we all like 100% work from home. So it was, um, it wasn't a hard adjustment now with everything going on, but it was certainly an adjustment when I first started um, with my company because I had never been in that environment before. I was used to the commute and I was used to like offices and I was used to just a regular work environment. But the first things I, I did was um, I had a couple coworkers that I would already kind of built a bit of a report with and I just said, hey, I need like, can we just, you know, just set up a time to chat and I just said, I'm kind of struggling with wrapping my mind around like what a work, like what working from home looks like full time. Can you just walk me through your day? And I heard like how people that had been working from home longer were like structuring their days, um, uh, structuring in breaks and things that they like to do to kind of break up the day a little bit and how they work most effectively. And that was super helpful. Because I, while I didn't grab what they said word for word, I kind of grabbed piece here, piece there, piece there. And then I adapted it to my own schedule and my own work style. Because um, as Bina said, we all have very different schedules and um, deliverables and things to do. So you, um, I definitely had to adapt it to what worked best for me in my role as well as for me uh, mentally. Because we're all wired different. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I heard a couple like I, I want to take a couple of things that, that you both said and uh, just add a little bit more to it, because I also work from home uh, around. Well, not not every single day, but uh, three to four days a week. I used to work remotely and one to two days from the office and and it definitely becomes a challenge so before before covid and before quarantining all of our, all of us um i was used to it but it's important to to what i felt was important was to set some some boundaries and to set some spaces for different activities um because that that helped me a lot because in in your brain you don't create associations that for example bed is for working and not for resting and working from uh i don't know if many people tend to work from bed at some point and that creates a negative association in your in your brain so what type of boundaries have you set yourselves uh working from home and especially not just working but what kind of advice would you have for students that are now studying from home and not only not only in the work environment, uh, I want to say. So one of the boundaries um, that I've set up, so I'm in a really where I'm at right now is like a pretty small space. So I actually don't have a dedicated office, which has worked OK for me. Um, it's not ideal. I would love to have a separate work station um because like what you were saying Alejandro is really important to create those boundaries but uh, so I've had to get creative and create boundaries a little differently so one of the things is um changing out of my pajamas you know um just kind of setting that marker of we are starting the day so I'm going to wash my face I'm going to like change my clothes and I'm and I'm I don't need to do my makeup or anything but just setting um it, it's like a good physical reminder for me that like I'm starting my work day um so that's, that's my biggest like thing that I implement from day to day yeah I totally agree totally agree with you working in pajamas might be comfortable but maybe not the best idea just for your brain for the purposes of creating bad associations in your brain and and how about you how about you um bina so i i do i live with my parents so i pretty much <laughs> pretty much have to um you know i i am in my room but i i dedicate a part of my room just for my office purposes because uh, I have like several monitors and 
I have to make sure like they're all plugged in and fixed right and there's enough lighting for me to do my troubleshootings um, and my get my projects done. So the first thing I actually do every morning is wake up around 3 a.m. And um, besides meditating and praying, I try to look on my vision board and tell myself what I vision myself um, with the ideas that I have on my vision board. That helps set the tone for me and it has helped me out so far um, because when I have a goal, even when I do have a goal and I'm trying to, let's say, get a certificate or something, I have to vision myself saying, I will get the certificate, I will get the certificate. And I repeat that and um, stuff like that helps me out with work. Um, for me, just changing from pajamas to professional clothes is not gonna make that much of a difference. Um, I'd rather be comfortable um, than just, you know, uh, wear professional clothes and my high heels and just look nice. Um, all of that is good if you're just transitioning into uh, mm. working from home. But like, um, like I mentioned, I have been working from home. We were given um, two days out of the week starting last year to work from home. So I was I was used to this. I was adapted already. But little things like that and eating breakfast before my 9 a.m. meeting and just being ready to be able to present and um, have my thoughts out there. Those are important for me. And um, another thing I actually do is make sure I have enough water um, because we tend to forget in snacks. Uh, we tend to forget to eat. And uh, if, if, if water and snack are not nearby, we just get up and try to go find something to eat. And that's gonna take 20, 30 minutes. So um, just having a little snacks and water nearby, it will help out and uh, creating a schedule for sure. Um, if, for example, for students, if you know you're not a morning person, do your work at night. If you know you're not a night person, do it, do it in the morning, wake up at five, six o'clock a.m. and get it done. Do the hardest thing first. Um, and it comes it comes with um, the good thing about doing the hard thing first before 12 p.m. is that once you get that done, you feel accomplished and you you have this energy of doing more throughout the day. I think I'm having trouble. Uh, are you able to, hey, Bina, are you there? She was on such a good role too. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think maybe, maybe the, the, the signal is not great. Um, but yeah, I, you've touched on several key points, for example, like getting up early and uh, Bina mentioned something about prayer and meditation and like when you have a deadline or something, when you have a goal set in your work or m let's let's uh, take this to the student environment because a, a lot of uh, people are now just trying to figure out how to do college from home. And um, so I just I just. Uh, want to take those key things that, that Bina mentioned and that you, Nicole, mentioned as well. What are, I mean, that, that there are some times that you just are struggling with a deadline. And um, how can you, what do you do different uh, in terms of organizing your time and your time management in order to meet the deadlines without all the stress about meeting the deadline, per se? Um, for me personally, I try to um, make a schedule of what I have to do in the deadline every month, um, especially with so many projects going on. And then out of nowhere, you might have a troubleshooting here and there for um, each project. So what I do is if I know I cannot meet a deadline, I sit down on my one on ones that we usually have with our manager every month and I ask him for help. Um, if it's possible to, uh, we do have interns. So if it's possible to get one of the interns to help me out, that way I'm not stressing myself out and I'm putting, uh, 
more a hundred, you know, my more, uh, more attention into projects that need my attention and my skill set um, versus just stressing myself out because I'm not going to get anywhere with just stressing myself um, and having that possibility of just letting an intern learn as well. Um, so it's just, it's just passing the torch down type of thing. And, and any comments, Nicole? Yeah, um, I, I actually just had something happen to me last week where we had this cleanup due and it was real, it's just really tedious and really slow and it's not hard, right? But it's just, and so I had like three days to do it and we had a short week and I've been just feeling a little work you know uh it, it's just there's been a lot of changes going on so my mind has kind of just been in a lot of places and I didn't pace myself well enough and I instead of breaking a debt and saying you know I have 96 uh, profiles to clean up and then I'm gonna you know tackle you know like 30 a day or something until I get through it and I'm gonna set some time in the afternoon from two to five, I'm gonna be working on my 30 candidates, right? Um, instead of doing that, which is what actually my brain needs for that type of just tedious work, I just need to like throw it on the calendar and schedule it and do it. And instead of doing that, and I knew I needed to do that, I didn't do it. And guess what? I missed my deadline. Um, of course, I had a talk with my supervisor and that assigned me the work and you know, I was just really frank, like, hey, I'm really sorry, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to to finish this by today, um, by the end of day today, I'm going to need, you know, till Monday, realistically to do it, because Friday we were off. So I was like, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I didn't time myself, I didn't pace myself well enough. I just said that and I said, next time I'll do better about pacing myself to meet the deadline. And they were super understanding about it, super cool. Again, it was a cleanup, so it wasn't life or death, but it's the principle of the matter. I still was just like kicking myself. I missed the deadline, I felt really bad about it. So finished that work and I got a new batch of cleanups assigned to me today. So guess what, lesson learned. I, you know, I know how my brain works at this point. I have a better idea of how my mind works. So I'll definitely be, dividing up that work and scheduling it as much as I as I need to to get it done um so that that's really that was a very recent example so yeah I think uh, from every experience like that yeah there's always some some type of learning and um uh, that's that's very valuable now you know what works and what doesn't work uh for you better than before and and yeah actually I feel, for example, I do a lot of, I have a lot of lists of things of, that I need to do. Of course, there are some things that have been on the list for several weeks now, but I, I know it's difficult to prioritize different uh, things that, from home, like just housework or from, uh, from work or from uh, classes, I don't know. So um, I use a lot of reminders. I use the the I have an Android and Android, so I use a lot Google and I, I'm just like, hey, Google set a reminder or something, things like that for me to it just came up again. And and actually it helps like uh, having something to remind you like, oh, yeah, I have to call this person by this time of the day on Friday. Uh, probably if I don't write it down or set a reminder, I won't do it. So I, I use a lot of the calendar and that that uh, those type of tools. Um, so so yeah, in terms of any, uh, do you have any special calendar, any special software, any apps you might use to to help you set up your time management other other than the regular calendar from from your phone or computer? So I actually um, 
have a few different things that I use. Outlook is, of course, what our company uses, and it's integrated into a lot of other things. So it's a big part of that. Um, but I recently found, a few months ago, I found Microsoft To Do. And um, you can download it off the Windows Store. But it's super helpful because I was creating my to-do list on the little, you know, the little sticky note app thing. And yeah. it's like, I mean, that's okay, but like to do is is an app created for to do lists. So I was like, okay, let me give this a try. And um, that's really helped me a ton. And it's helped to kind of separate because I use like notes, uh, um, the sticky notes, and then I use uh, the the to do list, the to do app. And it's just I've designated kind of a function for each app instead of having that overlap like before. Um, so I, I encourage uh, you guys to check that out. I think Google has one that's similar. It's like for, for lists. I forgot what the name of the app is, but Google has something similar, so. Yeah, I think, oh. I think Google's is Keep, or at least I use mm -hmm. Keep, yeah. Yeah, it's Keep, yeah. Go ahead, Mina. Um. Oh, okay, I'm not mute. I thought, um, well, there are several apps that I use um, personally because um, I'm a visual person. But um, the best one so far that has worked for me is just writing my um, writing what I need to do and then um, putting some time into it. You know, writing like how much hours, how much time I'm going to spend for each topic, and then just putting it on my wall. <laughs> Because that's that's has been the easiest because right there in my face. So if I don't do it, I feel bad. Um, I feel guilty. But another app that I use is called Forest, which is um, it only comes in mobile apps, um, mobile, not in computer. But what you could do is you t you set a time limit and um, for so what I do is for every ninety minutes I take twenty minute break. That's has helped me out a lot because I hate sitting on my desk after work and like studying for another thing or just you know hacking away because um I don't know if I told you guys but I am into cybersecurity and I'm learning to um do ethical hacking as well so it, it's just hard to sit back at the same desk and learn hacking um so that app is like life-saving because for 90 minutes, I do what I need to do and then get up for the next 20 minutes and walk around, go outside, um, go cook something or whatever, and then come back and set my timer again for another 90 minutes. Um, like Nicole mentioned, I also have, a, um, I use MacBook's actual sticky book, uh, sticky notes. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot to understand. Um, I just prioritize what I need to do um, Besides for work and study, I try to put my, you know, like make schedule a doctor's appointment or whatever I have to do um, on there because sometimes you forget those little important things like doctor's appointment or grocery shopping. <laughs> so a sticky note for that situation. Um, that's about it. Um, I really don't. I'm a, like I said, I'm a visual learner, so having just a notebook or a paper right there on my face is helpful, um, especially for students. Especially for students, if you wanna, if you wanna do a lot of studying and you wanna get a lot done, shut down your computer and just turn off your phone and use that little note that you got in front of you and and get get stuff done like that. Honestly, yeah. that's so true. That was really key my last year of college. I don't have the luxury of shutting my laptop now. I wish I did. But like my last year and a half of college, I my planner is what got me through that time. Um, I had to write it down. It was so much more helpful to, I would remember more stuff because I would it's write it down. Planner. There it is. I have mine somewhere around here. Um, <laughs> it's awesome use it it's and you're as Bina was saying like you're able to shut away your electronics and get distracted and trying to get to your like calendar or your list you can just shut all that away and just open your book so. yeah yeah I, I definitely agree with everything you, you two said and um, I, I think that it 
works some things work better for different people so so yeah anything that might be helpful definitely uh we need to to use those tools and uh uh, for example, I, I I know what you were mentioning about like things uh, here in the house or something that you mentioned, Bina, about having a, a sticky note or something to remember to do laundry or or things like that that might not be yeah. related to work. And sometimes just dividing those different tasks uh, on different apps or anything uh, helps. And actually, well, I'm I'm one of the uh, I'm consider myself like an advocate of using technology wisely. So the phones and, and computers each, they have more and more um, different uh, characteristics or features uh, in order to, to I don't know, to th there's a feature in my phone that puts it like in Zen mode. So you program, you pre-program like how much time you want it in Zen mode and it doesn't let you make a call or text or whatever. It only lets you like receive calls and and like maybe I don't remember if you can see like incoming texts uh, based on priority or something. You have to define some parameters in there because it's easy to get distracted when you don't have what we were talking about, like certain boundaries. And and I also I've I've read some things about it about productivity and and I used it in my previous uh, work. Um, and at some point it, it's it's good to have for example like okay so I'm gonna do this for the next sixty or ninety minutes uh, or or maybe I'm gonna do it in intervals of half an hour and take five minute breaks because always productivity it starts to go down whenever you're just like focusing on doing and doing and doing and not having even a single rest to go to the to the bathroom or to have a sip of water so um i don't know if you've read any any books or articles like this about productivity and how to use it to your advantage those rests and those breaks uh because just like working nonstop for four hours the productivity at the end of the four hours is, is less than half of your potential if you would have taken a small breaks during those four hours. So uh, I know you mentioned it a little bit, like how do you do those breaks, but what would you recommend students to check out or any articles, any podcasts uh, that you might might know about? Um, I would say, um, there's a few YouTube channels that I actually watch about productivity. Um, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but they definitely help because if you just go ahead and if, if you don't have a schedule and you want to get into that habit and be consistent, definitely check out some YouTube videos and see how, um, people put out really good content, especially medical students. They're very into it. And, um, they seem to know what they're doing. So I would, I usually, I, I would follow their tip and understand how, um, see what works for you. Try one thing one week. And then if, if you don't, if you're not into it and you're given up by, end of, you know, by middle of the week and you know, that's not for you, go ahead and go pick another thing. Um, see what really works for you. See, um, because, we're humans and we're going to change every month. Like what might work for me this month will not work for me next month, depending on how I am and where I am in life. Um, and my mood, it's, it definitely changes. So try a few, a few ways and then stick to one that works. And if you get tired of it and if it's not working for you, like six months from now, change it up. It's, it's no big deal. As long as you're consistent and you're flexible and you know, that you're trying that's the most that's the part that that you know matters the most um you have to keep in mind we're in pandemic and there are days that we're gonna not feel normal like it's not normal anymore so you have to be easy on yourself but at the same time the next day wake up and go ahead and do the same thing that you were doing previously yeah yeah, I agree with you. 
And uh, I, the other day I saw, like, I think it was an Instagram post about uh, a technique called, it's called, and I don't even know why it's called that way, but it's called after the tomato sauce, like the Italian tomato sauce, pomodoro, sorry, pomodoro. So it's like a technique to have like 25 minutes worth of work and a five minute break and, and do that for, I think it's four to five times. And then after four cycles, four to five cycles, you take a 15 to 20 minute break. And that way you maximize your productivity because, and, but, and, and there's some rules like breaks are non-negotiable and during the, and you can use them to make the calls you missed or to, to text back wherever is, is texting you to go to the restroom to, uh, I don't know, drink a cup of coffee or drink a glass of water, whatever you want to do. And so you have to make the breaks. You have to not take any breaks during the 25 minutes and, those kind of techniques, if uh, I feel that they're helpful, if you feel that you're not like uh, having a self-discipline of doing doing work, and you find yourself sometimes like you're doing some work, and then you see the TV, and you go watch TV for a while, and then you find yourself like two or three hours later without any work done. Or, or you just see your bed and you start feeling like tired. So you say like, oh, I'm gonna take a power nap and that power nap is two or three hours. So I think that it's, it's now even more relevant than before, just because most of us are working from home and just doing everything from home, like living, sleeping, eating, uh, working, studying, because we're, we're not, going out not even to to restaurants in many occasions we're not even i don't know so everything is being done at home so those spaces we talked about those boundaries we talked about those help a lot but also like managing your schedule in a way and dividing uh your your time of the day to do different things is what what i feel is most most helpful in 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 general and um you already talked about how how you were unable to meet a project deadline and you were able to like raise your hand and say like hey i'm not able to do this uh but do you have any advice for students because mostly it's just like group projects uh maybe that have like very specific deadlines or some online quizzes or something like that uh, what would you recommend if if students find themselves like not being able to meet a project deadline and, or their group is not responding and it's difficult because you don't even see them in class because you're not going to the classroom anymore so do you have any any recommendations for that yes so first things if you're personally so you yourself not like a project if you yourself are missing deadlines or like consistently like meeting the deadlines but just like you're cutting it really close and it's just this race to the finish like ask yourself why check in with yourself like why is this going on what what's happening and sure there's you know you're organ unorganized or you're not using your time efficiently and all that but sometimes it could be like deeper things. It could be stuff that you need to like sort out in your head before you can even start working on productivity. So one of my things that I've actually been struggling with, and I, and I think is why I've struggled with that deadline, among other things recently, has been my adult ADD has kicked up in a way that it hasn't in a while. And I think it's it's always there right but I'm going it's just going through like an unmanaged phase right now and I've had to just stop and instead of being like oh didn't meet that deadline I had to kind of check in and be like wait why didn't I what was going through my head and just from knowing yourself right you go okay this is because of this so um I've been trying to like deal with that first. So I've been doing a lot of research and, you know, I'm going to talk to my doctor and say, you know, how can I manage uh, my adult ADHD? 
Um, and, you know, especially because things are kind of stressful right now. And I think a lot of that, it, there's just a lot of other mental things going on. So I'm going to address that. And then, you know, I think a lot of the other things will fall into place. So um, mm -hmm. all that to say, just check in with yourself. You know, as Marielle just pinged in the chat, you know, be patient with yourself too. Don't just assume, well, I didn't do it because, you know, I'm some kind of failure or loser. Just be like, what What else is going on like that might be going on, you know? So um, that, if you're having issues in group projects, ooh, if you're having issues with group projects and it's hard to collaborate with people, uh, virtually, um, you know, it'd be nice to all be in a room and just get to it. Um, you know, I would say if somebody's just being responsive, period, right? Like you need to escalate that. If, you know, do the reach outs because you don't know what's going through their head as well. You don't know what's going on. So, you know, be kind to each other. But if at the end of the day, someone's just disconnected, someone's just not even trying, not even willing, whatever it is, and it's going to impact your grade, you know, escalate that. And there's nothing wrong in in doing that. You're not tattling on them. You're just simply, it's the same thing at work. You know, if something's going on, we would go to our lead and say, hey, there's this issue or there's this thing. How do you suggest we go about it? And then they can say, you know, I'll talk to them, I'll sort it out, and then the chat happens, and then you're all good to go, and you get your project turned in. So that's my... Yeah, yeah. I love what you said there about, like, first reaching out, because these, I mean, we're in the middle of, of uh, a pandemic here in the U.S. Almost, we're getting closer to 200,000 people that have died from COVID-19. So many students might be just like trying to figure out what, what are they gonna do? They might have like a close relative in, in the hospital or something, and uh, we might not be aware of that. So definitely that's, that is key, like being, being patient with yourself and with others. And uh, of course, there are some people that they might not have like any extraordinary thing going on in their lives and they won't respond, but, but like, I like what you said about first, like reaching out to them and trying to like, hey, is everything okay? Are you are you good? Are we good with this project? Do you need help with anything? Because uh, right now there uh, there's a lot of what I would call like blurred uh, boundaries and blurred lines between what's what's becoming like. Or, or what is personal life in, at home and what is work life at home because it's just the same space. So, so it's difficult sometimes. You, you, people going to work or going to school, they're not going to school anymore from, I don't know, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever time they, they were before. They're going to school whenever they can because they're also taking care of a little brother, cousin, their parents, or you never know. So um i like i like what you said there and uh and yeah i think it's it's key and um here kareem said about i wanted to spend this summer prior to working full-time learning new things or enhancing current skill sets online courses in uh, blockchain tableau python salesforce trailheads and excel are all on my to-do list would it be in my best interest to primarily focus on one or two or is it okay to have a range of subjects on my plate? Um, I would say depends on 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 what. I mean, what it depends on which are the tools that you think you're gonna use most the most. Uh, because of course, blockchain, Tableau, Python, uh, and Salesforce are like a way uh, a, a wide range of of applications. Mm -hmm. So depending on the type of work you're looking for after the summer, um, some might be a better priority for you maybe, just because uh, you, the, the work descriptions for the jobs you're looking for might be leaning towards like knowing more about Python, I don't know, or, or and you, you need to be more like into depth into Python 
more than knowing a little bit of everything, you know. So that that would be my advice. I don't know if uh, Bina or or Nicole have other advice. I would say, um, first of all, that is a great list. Um, I would say go with the ones that. So you have to think about it. Are you going into management or are you going into uh, technical skills? Um, as a technical skill, we don't use Salesforce. We don't use Excel. So if you're going into management, go ahead and do all that. If you're going into technical skills and you need to know Python for scripting, for doing automation, go ahead and learn that. And Tableau for sure. Um, it's huge. Python, Tableau, and blockchain. Um, blockchain uh, depends now, um, depending on your depending on your concentration. If you're into cybersecurity, mm, we, you might not use it. If you're going into something like um, AI or or any of that sort that uses big data, blockchain is great. Um, so you have to think about where, where are you getting the most out of each of these? If you're, like I said, if you're going to PM, if you wanna be a project management, Excel, Salesforce, those come handy. But if you're going into um, technical, Python, Tableau, for sure, top of my list. But um, I would say focus on one or two. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. At the same time, if you're going to get a job um, and the first thing you do when you get it, when when you come into the team, they might give you something like, hey, script this for us. And if you told them that you know how to do Python and you don't know how to script, yeah, you just just focus on one or two because um, you're gonna get tested the first sixty days of of any job. Believe me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Kareem. Well, good luck, Kareem. Are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. I'm here. Hey, you want to share where you'll be at starting soon, hopefully? Yes, so hopefully providing um, nothing changes, I will be starting at Accenture as a um, technology technical platform analyst. Um, currently, those items I listed there, as, as I guess I don't really know what my project is going to entail, correct? So I wanted to just spend this summer just dibbling and dabbling. Um, I know Salesforce is big. I worked on a cloud project when I interned with Accenture. So that's why I wanted to add that on my list. But I have so many. So I, I would imagine that should be on the higher end of this list. But I guess wondering if it's OK to just dibble and dabble on certain things. Or like I said, I don't know what my project is going to be. But should I gear towards what I think it might be? You know, I guess that was my, um, my question. But thank yeah. you for giving me great points. Yeah, so um, I think these guys gave you some really great insight because um, I, I'm assuming Alejandro is also technical, but you know they're they're going to be able to give you insight into that. Um, I'm HR, so I don't know, but uh, what I can do is um, I'll I can find you another tech platform analyst and I can connect you guys so you guys can chat about what they're using the most um at their project That'd be perfect. That'd yeah. be perfect. so connect on that Thank you. and and uh you i mean we've touched uh several times on on prioritizing and on on organizing it, it's a lot about being organized with your schedule with your time having different tools and and apps or whatever helps you best or or just like lists on paper and and if uh, as Bina said you're more visual then how would you make it more visual so we've touched uh, uh, in a lot of those points um but sometimes we in in uh, you already mentioned as well for example Bina you said that you you try to set like your um like monthly goals and and every day like go about all your or your your main goals for the month so uh but sometimes it's also uh important to be flexible as as uh you also mentioned at the beginning of of the call 
And uh, so what, how do you go about like prioritizing at the beginning of the week or if some things just jump in and your boss or, or well, because, because you're now working, but uh, in the, in the case of students, like there's a change for a project and they need to, to, I don't know, readjust something. How would you recommend they go about like prioritizing during the week? or before the week starts and how can they uh, like also be flexible about any changes that might go in like in the middle of the process? Um, so when I was in school, even now, I set my Sundays as my free day. And before I even do anything on a Sunday, I sit down, take an hour or two and plan out my week. But I have only two goals each week. I don't do more than two goals. So um, if I'm doing um, one of my goal could be like, hey, finish up the Python project that I just started or read chapter one through five. Um, and I try to put that in each day. So Monday through Saturday, I will have only two things on my uh, schedule. So if anything jumps up from maybe in middle of the week or end of the week, even the start of the week, then I have that flexibility to add a thing or two in there. Um, you just you just have to be flexible with your schedule because at this point you don't know um, when something might come up. Even at work, you you just don't know when you need that that one day to be free to do stuff. So take take a day off like Sunday or Saturday, whatever that works for you. I know some people who take off half the day Friday and they plan out their week because they like to start their week on a Saturday. Um, so just just find a day that works for you. Pick it, you know, um, make sure that day is your like a free day. It could be a half a day anyway, but um, be a free day, schedule your whole week and don't ever schedule like a whole month because you're going to mess up. Unless you have a deadline for like, for me example, I have a deadline of every 30 days, I wanna get a certificate. So I know what my deadline is um, and when I wanna sit for, for that cert. So I will try to have that deadline, but I won't do anything in the middle of the, um, from the start to the end, I won't have anything in the, in the middle, if that makes sense. I won't schedule anything unless the week comes up. So, um, don't do anything more than a week because you never know what your life is like. Sure. Yeah, so um, I also feel that, that it is important um, not to plan your 100% of your time because first, nobody's able to be 100% productive. So even if even during the uh, a lot of a lot of like the standard is like forty week hour like working and uh, like a regular week of work is like a forty week forty hour week sorry and um, for the for for the university or for classes it might work in a similar manner so I just think that it's better to as you said like don't even plan. Uh, too much ahead of a time and and uh, like try not to fill the the, the 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 like your your full schedule with a lot of activities because in the end you're not gonna achieve everything and then you're just gonna be frustrated about it because missing stuff you wanted to to do and you're not able just because you don't have the time it's 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 just regularly uh, frustrating. So one one thing that uh, helps a lot, and uh, it's related to just uh, um, like psychological behavior, is whenever you're doing like lists, try to put in in the list some very easy stuff you can cross out right right away. Because if you do like things that are very big goals, and all of them will take certain time, and you've always uh, look at your list of to or your to-do list and there's always like a lot of things that are not done and not one single one of those is crossed out 
in your head is like, this is going to be impossible and I'm not going to make it. So I always recommend like put in some two or three things that or either you have already done or that you will be doing in the next few minutes. That way you cross them out and inside your brain, you're like men like making a mental picture of, hey, this is possible. And there's already like a certain way that I've come forward. So so it's easier to complete it, to follow through with the rest of them. So I, I, I think that helps. And um, I think just I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So I, I want to close a little bit with uh, also like integrating the social life or your social life within all all these crazy things that are happening with with just study life and, and college life and work and everything happening at home. Um, how hard is it to make to make some decisions about your social life, like trying to stay in touch with, with friends, uh, but also making sure that you want to meet the deadlines now that people, for example, are having like in, in many cases, uh, they can have like virtual birthday meetings and like Zoom birthdays and, and Zoom parties. And uh, how do you go about like making these decisions about your social life? So for me, um, I like I said, I schedule everything in advance. Um, one of the things that I have um, is an Oculus, which is a virtual reality games, game set. It's, it's similar to any game, but um, I know a few girls from work who, who are into virtual reality and gaming. So we, we plan out a day um, once a month, once a week, um, and what we do is we play game together. It's technically like, you know, you're basically in the game, but stuff like that helps out. And also um, we, I have this thing with my, uh, with my friends, we binge watch a Netflix, uh, Netflix show once a week, once a month. And that kind of helps out because I'm not, I have everything else planned out. And so I'm not taking my time and watching Netflix every day for a little bit, for 20 minutes. I, I don't do stuff like that. It doesn't work with me. So for me to just have a binge watching weekend and then go ahead and doing the rest of whatever I have to do um, for the rest of the month, that kind of helps. Um, and I plan out social events in advance, like a month before. Uh, that way we can all get together. And yeah, it's kind of hard because you're not in person interacting but you technically you will get you will get used with but yeah you and basically you're also saying that those things are important to disconnect yourself from just work mm -hmm. and just every problem that's going on and having these social spaces with friends either you're you're binge watching something or you're playing a video game or or whatever you like to do does that help you like recharge for the following week for example Definitely. It it really does. Yes. Um, for work and for what I'm doing on my own time, it helps because, um, like I said, I'm studying for a cert for 30 days and these certs are definitely time uh, consuming and they're very hard because they consist of labs and a whole bunch of technical issues that that I don't usually do at work. So when I take, take an exam and pass a cert, I take the next weekend or that that weekend to recharge. I don't go back and study for another cert. Um, nobody, I don't think nobody's brain works that way because the more pressure you put, the less you're gonna learn. So you have to, exactly. you have to have this boundary of um, fun, interactive, social, and then get, you know, get back to business. Yeah, that that's amazing. How about you, Nicole? Um, socially. I would say make an effort to be social because it's it's good for you during these secluded times. But on the flip side of that, don't be afraid to say no to the 100th Zoom meeting you've received. Um, so, you know, check in with yourself and where am I today? Do I really want to sit, you know, on this chat with 50 of my extended family members and 
my great aunts yelling at each other because they're holding the iPad wrong or something, you know, like something crazy like that. Like, no, I really don't want to today. That's okay. Um, on the flip side though, right, it's really important to maintain those connections. So I would say don't, don't push yourself, check in with yourself. It's okay to say no, um, but also just say yes. <laughs> I just want to yeah, say one thing. I love how Nicole brought this whole thing into, um, you know, she mentioned about um, mental health. It's really important. And I, I love that you brought that in. Um, it's great that we take time for our own self as well and put ourselves first before you put anybody else's. Um, and that, that will help you a lot in, in real life and work and anywhere, actually. So always put yourself first and your mental health. Yeah. And don't be afraid to ask for help because that's one thing that a lot of females don't do that. And especially foreign foreign people, we hate asking for help. Don't do that, ask for help. Yeah, it's true. And I think all of your comments are extremely valuable. I hope that, that uh, it was uh, helpful for you as well and for every student that is connected to, to this uh, conversation. And um, I just wanna, wanna thank you everybody for being here and especially Nicole and Bina for uh, just opening up a space for us to ask you a couple questions and share your thoughts. So I, I just think it's really, really helpful, um, very insightful and, and just, I wanted to, to thank you and uh, on behalf of all the CAC and um, if you have any final comments or anything, we might in like a couple of minutes, but I, I, wanna, I wanna be very respectful with everybody's time. Or any questions that anybody has? I think, I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.